Hey, what you guys are about to see is two days of a Four Legends seminar that we held in Bangkok. The Four Legends are Nam Kabun, Diesel Noi, Karahat, and Chart Chai Sasakun. This was an absolutely incredible event that prior to right now has been available only for my patrons. Um, it was made possible through my patrons there who support everything I do and make this kind of documentary process and project possible. But very unfortunately, Nam Kabun Nongki Paihayut just died. Um, he passed away very, very recently. Um, and so as part of the Preserve the Legacy, part of what we're doing and the reason we're making these documentary projects are to preserve these men. And we're going to make this uh, two-day Four Legends seminar available to the public for the first time so that you guys can see these amazing men, including Nam Kabun, and kind of how they teach and interact and uh, perform their moi. The whole thing is learning and seeing and witnessing and preserving the individual beautiful expression of moi of each of these men. That is what the Muay Thai Library uh, Preserve the Legacy project is, and that's made possible through my patrons. So thank you again to them, and thank you to my patrons for making this possible so that we can make this available to the public now uh, as a way to honor and um, just witness Nam Kabun at this time. So this was a two-day event. The first day was um, a mix of people. There were people who literally got off the plane in Bangkok, got in a taxi and came straight to this seminar. Like they were like fresh off of like, 30 hour flight. Some people were coming from very far away. And then there were people who had been training in Thailand all over and uh, found their way into Bangkok for this uh, very rare opportunity, this Four Legends seminar that I don't know that there's ever been something quite like it prior to this. It was really amazing. Um, the Four Legends are very different from each other, um, but they're all friends. They're all very um, beautifully expressive of what the Muay Thai library project is in terms of like, there is not, there is a Muay Thai, it's Muay Thai, but the expressions within Muay Thai, the individual expressions of each man and each fighter and how like, you know a poet by their voice, you know a rapper by his rhymes and his flow, that's Muay Thai, that's these different legends. You can totally see them in the silhouette test. Kevin and I, um, actually on the morning that we found out that Nam Kabun had died, watched this two-day um, video. And what was really incredible to me in watching it is that it's very like you're just flowing through these four stations of these different legends. You can see one of the legends in the background while we're focusing on one, and there's totally a silhouette test. You're like, that's totally Chartai. Like, you can see what they're teaching and what they're doing, and this, like, you cannot make Diesel Noi not Diesel Noi at any moment. Like, he is just so purely himself. Um, so there's a voiceover on the video that I did at the time. I think I did it the same day. So, like, we shot it, and then I voiced it, and then there was a second day, and I voiced that. Um, the second day is uh, more of a cohesive group. Um, Smack is a group from New Zealand and Australia head, headed by Matthew Ball. They're our sponsors of me and have been incredibly supportive. They came for the second day. And so they're a group that came together. It's a little bit different from the first day, but just completely like threw themselves into the experience and uh, learning from, from each of these legends in their different styles. Um, because we're releasing this in honor of Nam Kabun, I wanna say something kind of particular about him and watching him <laughs> when we are watching this video in order to release it now. And I'm making this, um, intro for it is that Nam Kabun uh, has this interesting quality to himself, which is that he is the younger brother of another legend, Nam Pon, who um, died actually very shortly after we first met Nam Kabun. Uh, we never got to meet him. He was an incredible Moy Cow fighter, just so tough. <laughs> like Nam Pon's toughness as a fighter was Nam Pon's toughness as a brother to Nam Kabuan. And we interviewed Nam Kabuan. You can watch that on my YouTube channel. And he talks about how he was shaped by his brother, like how his style 
and what kind of fighter he became completely was shaped by his brother. Um, and so there's this, there's this thing about Nam Kabun that I really love, which is that because he is the younger brother of this other legend who's actually closer to the ages of the um, other three legends in this group, he's kind of the kid brother and he plays the part of the kid brother in this like eternal, youthful, jumping, like he's not jumping around like spazzy, like he'll kill you with these moves. Like they're so beautiful and expressive of his like athleticism. But he is also just this, like, boyish, charming, I would tease him, but I'm not even joking. He has this, like, boy band move. Like, he's, he's moving your teeth out of the way, but it looks like a little boy band move because he's just so charming and slick and, and wonderful. Um, so pay attention to the, the joyousness and energy and movement of Nam Kabuan and, and how aerial he becomes, especially on the second day he's... Uh, he was like that to the very last second, actually. He's very, very cool. Very strong guy. So uh, enjoy the Four Legends seminar. So this is outside of the Sport Authority of Thailand in Bangkok. That's Diesel Noi, number 11, walking with uh, Chat Chai, who was former WBC champion. Diesel Noi is the king of knees. People from all over the place came. Some people got off their flights flying into Thailand to come to this event, which is just so awesome. That's Karahat helping me uh, with the people in the front who helped us organize having this room. Um, there's Nam Kabuan. And uh, it's insane to have these four legends all together in one event. They hang out, they're buddies anyway, so like it's cool to know in the abstract that they like hang out with each other, but to actually see them all in one space, even though I know all four of them, I was totally geeking out about it. There's Tyler, Tyler Byers. So we actually had to stay outside of the room for a little bit because they had kids in there. And Karahat kept making this joke that the kids were going to be afraid of us, so we weren't allowed to go in there before they finished. But obviously the kids were not afraid of us. One of my favorite things of the whole event was when it was our turn. Chart Chai, who's like the sweetest man in the world, was like shooing some kids out like they were chickens. He like put his arms out and was like shooing them out of the room. But the Sport Authority of Thailand has tons of different rooms and sports and as you're walking down these murals on the side these photographs are of um, Olympic champions of all different sports Diesel Noy with his arm around Nam Kabun dude's huge Diesel Noy this is not something that's really been done before ever in Thailand it was so cool to like this is the guy who runs this is Poot Pat Noi, who's also a Golden Age legend. And then the guy in the blue is like the head of the sport authority. So we were saying thank you to him for letting us use the room. So here's starting out with Diesel Noi, who is known as Sky Piercing Knees. Um, he brings his heel kind of to the outside, like near his butt, in order to angle the knee in. But he's all about these, like, I am walking through you knees. Look at him hike his shorts up so that he can do this. He watches people so intently. He's With Diesel Noi, you want the energy of Diesel Noi. Like, the techniques are great. You want to learn the techniques. But look at how he feels his knees. He's like, go until they're dead. <laughs> oh, look at how he pulls and the face he makes. You can see how he feels his knees in that space. 
He's talking about getting a wider stance. And then he just walks, takes this huge step, and just walks so that his knee lands right in the center of his opponent. This is Nam Kabuan, who's a very well-rounded fighter. He's very uh, forward. He, w he did a wider variety of techniques than anyone else. He kind of like um, was, was bringing in a lot of different moves. But he's showing how to dodge a kick, how you do it with your back leg. He's like, you can be close, but then you bring your back leg back. See how he's using his waist to dodge it? So you don't step back with your front leg. You step back with your back leg. Nam Kabuan is the baby of this group. He's the youngest. He's kind of in the in crowd because of his older brother. <laughs> He's an amazing fighter, though. He held the 126 or 130 pound Lumpany title for six years. See how he guards. He's like, you have to keep your guard up when you do this to protect. Look at how much bend he gets, though. Like, look at how far back he can go. It's like Matrix style. But he uses his waist for all of his torque and movement. Back to Diesel Noy. He's showing how to teep as someone's trying to kick you. And you use that teep to step forward. And then your knee comes in. So he was stepping slightly outside of people's guard. Like, he was stepping outside of their stance. If you step right in the middle, you kind of miss. So he steps slightly outside so that the angle of his knee comes right into the center. So basically we had small groups of four and people would rotate through. So this is people practicing what each legend has been showing them. This is Chart Chai. His weight transfer is mind-blowing. It totally changes everything you think you know about movement and makes you so balanced. He was the only one that did pad work. So he brought pads in so that you could actually slam and feel the like weight transfer and how it affects the power and balance of your movements. When you're watching Chuck Chai, you really want to watch how his like foot, knee, hip, and shoulder all rotate together as one thing. Diesel Noy, because he's a giant and is working on these knees, <laughs> totally just like took over the entire mat. He like spread out so far because he covers so much distance in the way that he's like coming towards someone and landing his knees. I was running around between each group trying to translate literally what some of the legends were talking about, but also kind of conceptually where to look when looking at them. Like, Diesel Noy, you have to look at his energy. Look at how he's coming in to, like, show this. It's not necessarily about exactly where the teep lands. It's about, like, get the fuck back, because <laughs> I'm coming to knee you. Diesel Noy uh, has a bad heart. He's had surgery on it before, and he was looking at maybe having surgery again this past winter. Um, but the thing about him is that he only has one level. Like, he only has this top I'm coming to kill you level. And so it was hard to kind of keep him calm because what he wanted from people was his energy. Look at how he's stepping outside again. See how he's protecting with his arm? And then he steps outside of the person's stance. <laughs> look at the, look at Nam Kabuan's back, how he's so straight up when he's showing this block. A lot of people, uh, in Thai it's called gum, but it's like to curl yourself or like to crouch. They'll bring their upper body down to their leg, but you want to bring your leg all the way up to your arm. So you want to be really upright. You have to watch Chuck Chai's feet when he's doing his movements in order to understand where his weight is and how he's shifting it. So he's saying the uppercut and the hook are the same in terms of the pivot. He really twists his body in order to generate the power. But look at his knees and his feet.
Oh, see how balanced he is all the time? Mm. And then his body locks into position at the final point of his punch. He's like, you don't want the punch to, like, spin out. To keep it from spinning out, you basically lock into place. And the way you lock into place is how your entire body and torso twist together. Over here is Karahat. Karahat was working on clinching and, like, rotating your shoulders in. Karahat's shoulders are insane. If you watch him, if you watch his back when he's showing things, you can see exactly how he, like, wriggles his way in. And it's so slick, and it's got slight weight transfer, too. It was, it looks really simple what he's teaching, but it's actually surprisingly difficult to get the right feeling. When you get the right feeling, it's really efficient. See how he just wriggles his way in and then gets to the inside of the elbows, and then you can control the arms from there. So people understand how to swim their arms in, but they often neglect their shoulders, which allow you to get into much smaller spaces than you would be if you're just trying to use your arms. Look at him move in shadow to try to get me to explain the shoulder. See how you shift your weight a little bit in order to like get your weight in? Look at him go. His movements are so pretty when he does this. So when someone has a pretty good lock on you, you just kind of like slip your shoulder barely in. People were having a hard time with him understanding that once you move your shoulders to get to the inside, the idea is to control the arms. A lot of people in the West only learn to swim in and try to get the double plumb. So they'll swim in and just go directly behind the neck again. And he's like, the better position is controlling the arms. So when you swim in, you then control the arms here on the inside of the elbows. But again, it's, it's mostly a slight shift of weight transfer, the same as Chart Chai, but the rotation of the shoulder is not easy to do. Once you get it, you can feel it, but people are trying to use their arms only, but it's mostly the shoulders and the arms just kind of come on their own. So here Nam Kaboon is showing how when you block, like when you're ducking out of the way, you have to protect the entire line of your body. <laughs> so see how he blocks first? And then when he goes back, he's blocking the entire line, the front line of his body, with his shoulder and his arm. But the way you go back is the strength and flexibility of that back leg. When you go back like that and you keep your balance, you're able to immediately counterattack. So he bends back, and then as they miss, he can come after them. <laughs> I love Diesel noise so much. <laughs> he's, he's talking about how as a Moy Cow fighter, you have to be super strong in your torso. He's like, go ahead and take that punch. Who cares? <laughs> You come back and nail someone with a knee in the belly. So I'm trying to explain that when you train with Diesel Noy, you have to meet his energy, which is this, I do not care that you just touched me. Like, I don't care if you just hit me. I don't care if you just slugged me in the stomach. You are Diesel Noy. You are coming in. My gua, that means you're not afraid. He's like, don't be afraid of anybody. You just come in. He's teaching the ethic of Moi Kao. He is the king of knees, and he has beautiful technique, but Moi Kao is about a mindset, it's about an energy. And he really, really embodies that. Look at, look at even in this just like small demo, how he's like, I am going to plow through you. 
He's saying if you're coming, if you're fighting a puncher, you just have your arm up to block those punches. So if someone comes to punch you, great. You submarine underneath it with those knees. He does not care if you punch him. He's like, just put your arm up to block. See how he's melting away? How he's like getting hit by those punches and kind of going backwards? That's not, that's not Muay Cao. You take a couple of punches, get your arm on that neck. See how he's blocking across with his left? He does this beautiful Dracula block. <laughs> Even when he's trying to just explain something, he gets so excited. <laughs> and we try to keep him calm for his heart, and he just gets so excited. Nobody loves Muay Thai more than he does. So you can't just lock and stay in one spot. You're always moving. See how he's switching sides? He makes his stance wide, and he's just going like threading himself through Tyler's guard to create this space so that his monster knees can come through. Oh. He's like, if you do it like this, this doesn't hurt. You have to get your leg back first so that you can really slam in. <laughs> he's like, he's like, I've just taught you how to murder someone. Sylvie, explain that. <laughs> like, okay. He defeated many a kick with his lean back. So, Nam Kabuin faced back back some of the best fighters of the Golden Age. All of the best fighters of the Golden Age, really, even just around his weight class. And he, He's a very forward fighter, but with this kind of flexing bendability, he would get out of the way of kicks and just come right back at people. Um, that gave him this like air of um, like unstoppability that is really cool. So when you have gloves on, you have to use the bone on the side of your arm. It's like the blade of your wrist. And you use that to push people's forearms and inside of their elbows to really control the arms. <laughs> I was just like running from station to station, so I look a little crazy at times. So, Diesel Noy's lips were turning blue and he was having a hard time. It was a hot day and there were times that he had to like sit down um, just to recover. So I was trying to give people a pep talk about when you're watching Diesel Noy and you're learning his techniques, you can't like, you can't do it gently. Like, don't hurt people. Control the power. But he wants the heart. Like, what Diesel Noy teaches is the heart of a Muay Cao fighter. So do the movements with control so you're not hurting each other. But perform the like, I am going to come through you. Because if you don't, he will demonstrate the heart and it's just... <laughs> These are more, uh, some of these more beginners. <laughs> Gotta keep them calm a little bit. <laughs> so, so I was telling him, show an example and then settle down. <laughs> like, take a break. Look at him go, put in his guard. He's so pretty in silhouette. You always know it's Diesel Noy in silhouette. So he's showing his broad stance. Hands. He's like, look at how you have a broad stance and you keep your body upright. Look at the look at the lightness as he kind of bounces on his legs. Oh. Interruptive team. See how he just stands his ground. He's like, I do not care Don't if you kick stance. me. He's just gonna come straight down the middle. So this is a left-handed person. So he's showing how, as a right-handed person, him, Diesel Noy, he is directly coming into her open side. He just steps into it. So see how Chai Chai torques first. He totally twists around his center line. His shoulders go so far behind in order to create the torque and generate the power. 
So Chart Chai was WBC champion. He lost his belt to Pacquiao after winning seven the first seven rounds. And then he was trainer of the year upon across all sports in 2011. He's an incredibly good teacher. See how smooth he makes that turn before the punch? It's not one, two, it's one movement. It's just got this like loading of the spring and then moving all as one piece. You can see the varying degrees to which people understand the super twist, but not where the weight goes. It's hard. Here Carhat is showing again how to like use the inside of the elbows to control people's arms. Not only are you controlling arms, but that's how you get people off of you. Watch his shoulder. So she's got a good grip there. See how he just Both rolls roll. his shoulder past the forearm? He actually never creates space between his shoulder and her forearm. It stays touching the entire time. He just rolls it enough inside shoulder roll, secure the that he gets control um, of that grip. First you kick, encounter a check, and then you look like you're kicking again, but you teep on the check. So this is when you kick and get someone blocking, and then you know that they're going to try to block again, <laughs> and you fake the kick and teep. The Namkabuans like you as the person who is supposedly being so faked, you can, you can then do the cross block. The Here I'm showing how rib, you really want your elbow to be stuck to your rib, and so you can actually throw Inter this punch system. against a wall. So I would just put my arm against wide. people so that they could feel the rotation being what generates the power. A lot of people, myself included, pop the elbow out in order to try to throw the punch with more power. By punching against a wall or something, you only use the torque, you, like you only use the rotation for the power, and it makes it really efficient. Look at his feet. Watch his feet when he throws stuff and where he ends. Oh. He never leans outside of his frame. He stays in his frame all the time. So he's showing how you don't lean out of your frame, how you like stay in the center line. And your body is trying to go in one direction and the other half of your body stops it. So you so end up like always line, uh, bringing everything down the center. Out. So the jab comes out to the front and you don't lean. Then as you're coming forward, you use your other leg as like the rudder on a boat to keep you in line and steer you as you're going. So this is all front side. He's showing how to keep throwing your front side while kind of marching forward. You have to move your feet. So he's talking about making your movements emphatic. When you keep moving, you want to like, when you shift to one side, you want to have this push on that side. See how when he moves, he makes it really emphatic. So he's gripping behind the elbow so that you can't pull your arm out. And then he just grabs the neck and he has total control of your body. <laughs> So if you're just starting out in clinch or you have very basic clinch, you don't have to do all of these arm loops and moves. But you want to have the same emphatic movement every time you like change your position. So you don't have to know all of the techniques. You just want to feel each one as you go because the way that you learn clinch is by feeling all of those different positions. And then the knees are there to like just kill your opponent's gas tank. Oh, oh God. He does this to me you all the time. So when you go and grab someone's neck, that's a great position. He just rolls and pivots his foot. The pivot is the same as the way you pivot when you're going to throw the knee. But he pinches his shoulder, which throws my forearm off. 
See how he's on the outside? That's not a good position. But he goes towards my forearm and pinches with his shoulder, and it throws my forearm off. See, see how small of a step it is? Who gets inside position. So you don't care that someone just got inside position. You just knock it right off. It's amazing. It actually kind of hurts too, like if he does a really sharp angle on it. So it's, most people when they grab the neck, they pull. So you go the opposite way of the way that you would be pulling, but it's the same type of step, you're just pushing instead. But the shoulder has to come up. If the shoulder doesn't come up, you won't get the angle to throw the person's arm off. He kind of turns his head a little bit too, because when you have a glove on, you have to clear the hand. So the hand can't grip your neck. The way he turns his head a little bit, that hand is just going to slip right off. So here he's showing when someone has a pretty good grip on you, how to like pop, pop their double plumb off. So see how you put one hand under the armpit? And then you turn someone while their knee is up. So when someone is trying to turn to knee you, you turn towards the standing leg while they're trying to knee. <laughs> Diesel noise like, knee for real, knee at me for real. <laughs> and he just moves quickly. <laughs> so he did it going away from the knee, and then when I tried to explain that's what he was doing, he went towards the knee, because you can do both. But see, the point is how quickly you twist someone. It's like you, you put a little bit of violence in it. You can't, like, mush someone in the direction you want them to go. It has to be a hard spin. But this is while someone is trying to knee you, so you don't just wait for the knee. You time it for when the knee is coming up, and then you just totally spoil it with the turn. So this is not a strength move, even though I'm saying put violence in it. It's about the emphasis of the turn, not about the like strength and power of it. <laughs> so he dives his hip into the knee. But he's turning his hip towards the knee, or turning his hip in a spin away from the knee. But you stay close to the body. You don't want to put your butt back. He's showing where to put the arm. As you swim in, you want to go to the inside of the elbow. See how he keeps his head down, and then he just rolls his shoulder inside, and as he comes inside with his shoulder, the forearm comes over and controls the elbow. So people have this tendency, because of the way that they learn, when you swim in, everyone goes for the neck. He's like, when you swim in, you're already on the bicep, you just pull back enough that you're on the inside of the elbow because that's a perfect position for controlling the arms. If you control someone's arms, they can't grab you, they can't elbow, they can't push you off. If you're just controlling someone's neck, you can basically only lock from that position and maybe you can move people around because their body goes where their head goes, but controlling from the arms gives you a much broader variety of things that you can do and greater control in general. But you don't want to like wriggle your way in. You kind of shift your weight over to the other leg in order to make it this very small, subtle, slippery movement in. But see how if you stagger your stance like this in the clinch, you don't have as much room to move. So you kind of, when you get into the clinch, you want to square up. And then when you square up, 
as you try to pull your shoulders in, like when you start rotating your shoulders in, you don't have to go as far. So if your shoulder is getting stuck on the forearm, you basically shift your weight over to the other leg and do a very small dip. It's totally like a K-pop dance move. <laughs> See how soft it is on the feet. It's just a little slither, basically. So once you get your shoulder in, you have the inside position. And you don't want to reach out on someone's arms. When you swim in, you keep everything really tight in the center. You're just controlling the arms. So he's saying if you're facing a puncher, punchers come forward with boxing. If you try to go backwards, no good. See how he's just coming after me? Even if I'm a puncher, I'm not going to punch great backwards. So he's just going to keep coming straight at me and submarining. <laughs> he's like, my cow doesn't go backwards. <laughs> Look at how he guards with his right arm, like across his head. And then he makes this really long arm with his left arm. So he has a super long reach, and then he has a secondary guard behind it with his right arm. So Nam Kabuin is saying don't cross block, because when you cross block, someone can knock you over easily. So he's showing how to parry instead. So you block, block, and then when they try to teep, you just parry it to the side. But you want to parry across someone's body because it knocks them off balance. So there's that kick, kick to get someone blocking. And then you teep. And then when they try to kick you back, you can dodge that and come at them. It's basically always knowing what someone's counter is and being able to evade it or block it. So Deason always basically like kick and punch me with whatever you want. He's showing how you can just walk through it. And then once you get to this position, someone is totally screwed. So basically as Diesel Noy or as a Moy Cal fighter, you're gonna have to weather some punches and kicks in order to get in, but he's showing you how you walk through it. So see how he's keeping his elbow on the front of the body? And when, when the opponent straightens up because they don't wanna have their head yanked down, when they straighten up, that's when Diesel Noy wraps his arm around and hooks the arm. Look at his hook on that arm. Look at what control he has in both directions. And he's waiting for when the knee comes, because then someone's on one leg, and it's much easier to turn. It requires much less effort. This is totally Namkabuan. This like bounce back and forth that looks like a boxer. I actually call that the Nanki rhythm. He's from uh, Nongki, and his gym name is Nongki Pahuyu. But he and his brother both have this, this like, bouncing back and forth. It's so pretty. <laughs> but when he comes back, he's loading for something. He's saying, he's saying, don't, don't wind up your elbow like a goober. <laughs> He's making fun of me from when I trained with him. <laughs> See how when you punch, you get the opponent to block, you get them to flinch, and then when they flinch, you do this jumping elbow on top of the head. So you want someone, you want someone to guard like this, because when they guard like this, they can't see you, and that's when you can do like this crazy jumping, crack the coconut. This is something that. I don't know, I, I haven't trained a whole lot in the West, but I've never seen it taught. This wanting someone to block. 
Like you obviously getting someone to cover so that you can do something is pretty standard, but getting someone to block so that you have an advantage is interesting to me. It's very cool. It's a nice long clinch there. So see how Diesel Noy is standing up straight? He's doing with his body what he wants them to be doing. He's just thinking of it in his body, like he's basically like watching a video game and like moving his body the way it should go. This is clinching at the end. We did kind of some like freestyle clinching and then the legends walked around and kind of gave people pointers. Diesel Noy is showing how to crush someone down. <laughs> so. Nam Kabuin, one of his nicknames, was the body clinch expert. He had amazing body throws. So he goes around the body, he locks. Then as someone's trying to come out, he lifts them a little bit and uses his leg to just kind of like, see in shadow? He just tips them over. He won many fights, fourth round, with go to look. To mid or high clinch. So as they're trying to get out, you do this little lift, and then you use your knee on the outside of their thigh to kind of tip them. But you don't lift someone up, not like that. <laughs> it's a slight lift. See how it's just a small you lift just tip, a tiny bit. tip. So if you stay down low, the referee's going to break it. So basically you want to do... You grab down low around the waist, and as they try to get out, you do this slight lift and tip them. Look at how subtle it is with his leg. Because you just tap, you just tap the leg. Oh, beautiful. Well done. So he's saying you just float them a little bit. So it's not even a lift, you just float them. So here's Karahat. <laughs> When someone knees you straight, which everyone tries to do because it's a great point, you just go outside the leg. And he's using, he's even hitting the bottom half of the leg. He's not even going to the thigh. He's like, you just melt your body back a little bit and then you tip your hip. Yeah, you make Look at his body good. form. Oh, so he's subtle. so tiny so and it's so subtle and there's no way to avoid it. So it's when the knee is straight. The reason that didn't work is because you have to kind of push your hip in across your own body a little bit. And then you use your upper body to kind of like turn them in the opposite direction. See how he twists his body just a little bit. <laughs> Diesel Noy loves this when you knee underneath someone's kick or teeth. So he's showing me what to do with teeps. I got teeped in my last fight. And he's saying you just grab it and then nail someone on their hamstring. <laughs> Diesel Noy was so agitated about my fight. He grabbed Nam Kabuin to show him what to do. So he's like, if they come straight and you just grab their leg, see how he's kneeing at the hamstring? <laughs> Nam Kabuin doesn't want that. <laughs> oh, that's a car hop move, that slip out. So if someone has their elbow bent, you can't do this pop over because the leverage is too good. It's too hard, they have too much strength. You have to straighten the arm. So if the, if the elbow's bent like that, you can, I call it the can opener. You basically just push on the elbow and push on the neck in opposite directions, like scissors. Oh, it's a good turn. So here he's showing the body lock again. See how he goes? He's not going way down at the waist. If he goes way down at the waist, the referee can break you. And if you have gloves on, you can't hold your hands. So you basically lock your wrists together. See how he's just like where a bra strap would be? And so he just kind of does this little lift and tip. 
points in the fourth round after striking for three rounds, going to the body lock and finishing off the fight. You can see in his shadow how the point is to like contort the opponent's body. It's like you're flipping them, like if, if you were like turning a um, egg timer, like you just pick it up and like flip it to the side. See, see how he uses his leg on the outside of the leg as he's lifting. It's not lift and then tip. It's lift and tip at the same moment. And the knee goes in. So he went to the inside of the thigh, which yeah, is yeah. why it was hard to tip him. If outside. you go to the outside, yeah, someone basically outside. just trips over it. So he's showing here if the leg is on the inside. If you're inside, you can tip them from the inside. You bring the leg up higher. So see how you have to bend the knee and bring it up if it's on the inside? It's like a dog at a fire hydrant. <laughs> but if it's on the outside, you lift and tip in. But you tip in opposite directions. See how Karha scarecrows his arms? So this guy grabs him and he pulls his arms up. One of the reasons to bring the arms up like that is you actually take the power out of someone's arms. When your arms are up in that like clothes hanger position, you can't, you don't have all your power. So not only are you taking power away from them, but by lifting it up, look how easily he, he can slip through. under it. Sylvie, help. He just walks. Walk See how he just walks through? And then his back leg taps the leg as he's passing. See how he doesn't even do like a super spin or anything? He just like glides through. <laughs> like a cat through a cat door. You kind of have to do it fast, but you don't have to do it hard. So as you walk past, your back leg basically clips their leg. So you step, you step with the leg that's already forward. So you don't step and then drag the leg. It's all one movement. It's getting there, getting there. He's trying, he's trying to go around him to like not hurt him. You just go straight with no power. You just duck under and go perfectly straight. And when you go straight, their leg is in the way. You don't want to go around them. You want to go through them. That's Kara. So he just puts his chest up and uh, cuffs him. He was a white fighter and he cut his teeth with all of the best fighters when he so was this young. Guy at the all very of them coming is, up together, um, but he's best known Khan. for boxing. He's one of Chuck so he's WBC fighters. champion, world champion. Um, he lost his belt to a guy you might know, Pacquiao. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but he was also a trainer of the year across all disciplines, all sports in Thailand in 2011. I think he should win it every year. He's absolutely incredible. But uh, he has a gym in uh, northern Bangkok, Sasakun. He's going to be teaching boxing. When you watch him, pay attention to the way he aligns his foot, knee, hip, and shoulder. He's incredibly symmetrical in what he does. So just watch his overall form, and it's the way he transfers his weight. It's really what you're looking for with him. I'm Wear gloves because he's going to hold too. pads and do stuff with you. This is Nam Chabun. Uh, he's an incredibly well-rounded fighter. Um, he transitions between like boxing and then like the best kicking that you've seen. When he was going towards his opponents, he's really well known for plowing, which you're not allowed to do anymore. But basically, my trainer yells Nam Kabuin when he grabs my leg and like starts going. So he's really, really well known for just being super aggressive. One of my favorite moments in any fight ever. He plowed his opponent out of the ring and they both went and while the ref is trying to help his opponent back in, he hops over the top rope to like come after him. It's, I like, my face melts when I see it, it's really cool. So when you're watching Nam Kabuin, his waist and his feet show where all of his um, motions come from. He has a really wide step. This is Karahad. Karahad is a three-time Lumpany champion. He fought everybody and he fought up in weight all the time. If you can think of a fighter from the Golden Age, Karaha fought them like four times. He fought everybody. Um, he's incredibly quick. 
He's going to be teaching you some clinching and some elbows. Watch his shoulders. The way he moves his shoulders and the way he transfers his weight on his feet is what you watch with him. And he's very, like, sneaky. So if you can actually get behind him and watch, like, from the back, you can see where his movements are coming from. But he's, like, um, he's a female fighter, which is, like, technical, but he always is coming forward. He's not in the base of, like, I'm going to stay out of the fight. He's always, like, in the fight. Incredible. Dieselnoy is the king of knees. If you have ever heard of knee fighting, he is it. Like, he is the best there ever was. He was so unbeatable in his time that he was forced into retirement, which is an incredibly sad story because I've never met anyone who loves Muay Thai as much as Dieselnoy does. He has one level, which is really high, so he just wants you to go. So when you train with him, he's training knees with you, but he wants you to work your heart. You have Dieselnoy's heart, which is like, you do not back up, you just meet everything at it. So if he's teaching you like a teeth and coming forward, you can do it with control, but do it with a like, I am going to crash into you energy. Um, his heart is not great, so we're gonna put him over here and he might need to sit down at times when he's showing you things, but he's an incredible teacher with incredible style. So these are the four legends. I think they're the cool Um So we'll break up into groups and start the session. So I'm introducing everyone for day two. This was um, one group, but it's a group that is comprised of people from New Zealand and Australia. This is Matthew Ball. He runs the Smack Gym, which uh, brings all these people every year to Thailand. They're from gyms all around in New Zealand and Australia. It's very cool. They're a very cool group, and um, it was a very cool day seeing all of this. Matt had a great way of explaining and showing what these trainers were trying to explain, these legends. But see how, look at his feet, Diesel Noise feet. So he has his hand up in the guard close to his face as this like protection that's close. And then he has this really long arm. So the long arm is gonna hit Matt in the face as he's coming in. And then he collapses into the clinch once he gets inside. And then see how he stands upright so that he can yank on Matt's head and like knock him over with that knee to the inside. <laughs> this group is a, is a mix of students as well as teachers from all of these different gyms. Look at that beautiful pose. Look at how his knee comes up. And his guard is in this like Dracula guard. He says my gum. Gum is to like crouch. You want to stay really upright. And then once you get your double plumb, he keeps his elbows on the front of the body, which gives him a lot of leverage. So you can see in this group there are some younger guys who are fighters, and then there are some older people who have been doing this for a long time. But everyone was so engaged in what Chart Chai was teaching, what everyone was teaching. It's a really cool group. Look at his twist. See how he goes in one direction first to like load the spring, and then he reverses direction quickly, which is like um, it's like pulling on the spring and then releasing the spring. So basically your weight is on the opposite foot from the arm that you're throwing. A lot of people will step onto their front foot to jab. He puts all his weight on his back foot as he's jabbing. So he's like, don't let the punch pass. You want to lock. Like you do go through your target, but you don't want to spin out. See how he locks into place at the end? His face is stopping his hook. By looking forward, he's like spotting, and then his shoulder, as it hits his jaw, that's what's stopping his hook. So he's doing well over here. Look at how he just pivots. See, you don't want to bring your weight over across your shoulder. He stays along his center line. A lot of people use their shoulders to go outside of their frame in boxing to like slip. 
he stays inside his frame all the time and just like rotates his shoulders really hard, but there's no like leaning. So here Namkabuan is showing like a couple of, um, they're kind of like drills with a number of attacks, catches, counters. So block, catch, spin, and then attack. See how as he steps over to the side, as he's catching the kick, it takes the impact out of the kick. But as he's going in the same direction of the kick, it allows him to throw it with much more spin. Look at how Dieselnoy always uses that super long front arm. And then the one closer to his face is just defense. It's like a secondary fence. So he's pointing out, he's having Matt demonstrate where to step as you're coming in. See how he teeps? And then the teep becomes the step. And see how his right leg steps outside of Matt's stance so that his knee comes really straight down the center. See how those movements like flow into each other? This is how Diesel Noy just keeps coming forward, is there's no like pause <laughs> between his forward motions. So there's this moment where he teeps and then steps down and then comes forward, but it all flows as one thing. Like you don't stop and reset, but each step is like a beat in a rhythm. So he's saying every time has a step. Every time you punch has a step. You punch with your feet. So all of your power is generated from your feet moving and he has this beautiful bend in his knees. So his shoulders and his knees kind of work together as these like cubes in space. His balance is just insane. <laughs> Nam Kavon was having a lot of fun on this day. <laughs> See how he kind of takes a slight step back as he's catching the kick, and then he brings his weight forward in order to throw the kick up. This is very funny because Nam Kaboon is explaining that you're only allowed to take two steps. That's hilarious because he's the plow king. <laughs> he's like, they took away my toy. I'm not allowed to plow people out of the ring anymore. <laughs> only two steps. <laughs> but so you take those two steps and then you lift in order to have the person thrown the rest of the way. But as you're throwing, you're ready to explode after them. So generally in those two steps, you're getting someone onto the ropes so that you can attack them while they're landing in the ropes. So here, Karhat again showing how to like slip your shoulder just past the forearm. Look at how tight he keeps it to his jaw. So he's pinching my forearm a little bit so that I don't get a strong grip on his neck. And then he just immediately swims in. He's breaking this down into a single, into a single thing. You don't want to like deform your body to dip your shoulder too low to get in. It's not about how low you go. It's about how you can just roll inside the forearm. When he does this, he does this crazy fast. See how he comes inside, and then once his shoulder is on the inside, he's in the dominant position, even before he brings his forearm in. And look at how upright he keeps his body. He rolls in with his shoulder, but his chest comes in immediately. 
He gets a lot of turn by using his feet. Look at his knees in this angle. You can see how much he uses his feet to create those sharp angles to get in. So this is about not leaning. <laughs> he, ba he basically is like a mechanic. He makes these like adjustments. So the weight is going onto that right leg, but you don't tip your shoulder over that foot. So see how he's holding her shoulders now so that she rotates around the center instead of leaning. So the weight comes onto your feet, but you do not want your weight to come over your foot. It's like right on top of the foot. And then you use your opposite foot with a little bit of weight as the rudder to like balance you. <laughs> he's switching stance. See how he's bringing his weight onto his front foot and it's showing how that's off balance. The weight shifts onto the back foot as you throw that jab. So he's like, when you're in front of your opponent, don't use your body to go forward. Bring your entire body forward with your feet. Like, don't lean. Bring everything with your feet. See how he's using his hand in front of his chin to show how you keep your chin in one spot and then just bring the whole body. So he's, he's talking about how if you're too close, you can't get good power on the knees. As a Muay Cow fighter, everything has to be strong. You can't, like, do things kind of soft sometimes. <laughs> Muay Cow is all power. So he's showing how you create space in order to get the power on those knees. So you're in tight. People have good grips, right? So where his feet are right now, that's no good. So he makes his, his stance wider, and then he's going to pivot to create distance between their bodies. He's making space by pushing across the face here. So he can't come inside. So when he swims in, he can go around the arm. Otherwise, he can go outside and push the face. But he has to create space to either turn his body or turn the opponent's body. So see how his head is down like this? This is not good. So this is hard to get out of. So he steps outside of the opponent's stance. And the opponent's pulling on him like he's yanking the head down. So he keeps stepping outside of the opponent's stance in order to mitigate the head being dragged down. Otherwise, if you keep your feet together, your head is just going to get pulled totally down and you're totally controlled. So he's showing how you have no balance if you try to lean forward on the elbow. So he's showing how you actually step in, you walk in to reverse your stance to create the power for that elbow. So see how he, he parries and then steps in for the elbow on the open side. Oh, Jesus. The thing about Nam Kaboon is that his movements are all super visible, like they're really dramatic. And by taking these super wide steps, he generates all his power in moving forward. It's really nice. Boom. So block, then get out of the way, and then counter kick. Or if you get out of the way, you have punches, elbows. Boom. Oh. <laughs> or all of the above. <laughs> But look at how when he blocks, he brings his foot down solid. But when he dodges, he's using his back leg to get out of the way. See how important it is that he has that block up. That left arm stays up and he gets out of the way, blocking the whole front of his body. 
That's so that if you don't get out of the way, you don't get kicked in the face. So his shoulder is up as protection because in order to dodge back, you can't keep your arm up the whole time. So the shoulder is protection once you bend your body back to a certain degree. See how his front arm is flat against his body, but his back arm is still guarding. Yeah. See how dramatic that movement is? And because he like lands on his back foot, he's able to spring back with it immediately. He's got this like... <laughs> If your head goes behind your foot, you can't spring back. So you want to make the, the movement be from your back foot. So Diesel Noy has this whole thing about letting your opponents bring their weapons out first. But if your opponent is bringing their weapons out, you are not backing up. You're basically interrupting them. <laughs> He's like, throw whatever you want at me. See how he just, he just goes through it. <laughs> Jesus. He's not using any power, but you still have this total like, oh shit response when Diesel Boy is coming at you like that. His energy is incredible. Oh, look at that block. See how his back arm just goes across his face in that Dracula guard? And he's got that super long front arm, but it's so tight. Oh. And then he just grabs him with that front arm. He just walks through it. He keeps saying dun. Dun means to walk, but it's like, it's a forward moving opponent. It's to be the aggressor. But he walks through stuff. Like, it does not matter what you're throwing at him. See how he kneed underneath that leg as the guy was kicking? He didn't even catch it. He's like, punch. So as he's punching, he's like, sure. And then he just goes straight through it. But see how he keeps that back arm as a defense all the time. Like, he never opens his guard, even when he's reaching. So you like, you meet the opponent's attack with this like, I'm coming through it, and then you grab them on the other side. So there were many more people on the second day, which is one of the reasons that uh, Cha Chai brought uh, Yodmon Khan to help him. So there he is holding pads. <laughs> He's very sweet. So look at how wide Ch Chai's stance is even while he's holding pads. He kind of does the same movements to catch as he does to throw. Look at how he pivots out of the way. Go ahead and teep him. His body like disappears with that pivot around the side, but by bringing that leg back to get out of the way, he's generating the power. Nankabun <laughs> 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 is very funny. <laughs> So he's showing how to slip out of the way. See how he parries it, but you have to step out. And then the twist of the body allows the teep, if it makes any contact, to just slip off the side. He's not catching it. He's just patting it with his hand. He's just pushing it out of the way. Oh, look at how quickly he reverses direction. So he's showing how someone is like a, a, a rope, right? So if you push someone and they kind of 
bounce against the rope and then come back, you get this double impact. He taught me this in our lesson and made a huge deal about it. It's one of the coolest things ever. So basically you shove someone into the rope like you're shoving them into a trampoline. <laughs> and then as they slingshot back at you, you elbow. So because Dieselnoy will not calm down, we, <laughs> we had some assistants come in to help him with physical demonstrations. This guy works with the Thai national team. So see how he's swimming in, clamps the neck, and then swims around to get that hook around the arm, and then uses the hook around the arm to trip him to the floor. His leg goes outside the thigh, and then he just pulls on that hooked arm. So as you swim in, you go over the arm and then swim under to create the hook, and you want to go behind the elbow. Then you step forward to meet the thigh, and then you just pull them over your thigh. So Cha Cha is trying to show how that springing works, how you like twist your body, and then it reverses direction. There's Matt being awesome. Look at his legs, look at his knees how he uses that twist. So he's saying lots of boxers have a problem with their uppercut because they lean outside of their frame to throw that uppercut. See how he becomes off balance and so he doesn't have power and if he gets countered he's going to go offline. Look at his knees and how centered he stays to throw that uppercut. He basically steps across. It's almost like swinging a baseball bat, how you like step into it. So he's going, his feet are going to either side of the body and then the uppercut just comes up the center. But look at how he twists first. It's so sharp, it's so on balance. Everybody learns this uppercut where they like lean down first. So you, you have to go against that when you're doing his uppercut. <laughs> Nam Kabuan showing how you can't goom when you catch a kick. See how he steps out to take the impact out of the kick? So you block first, then you step over to catch the kick. So she stepped forward a little bit, but she didn't step to the side. Look at how much he steps back into the side. Look at his feet. You can't switch around because you're actually creating an open side. So this girl's uh, left-handed. So if you're catching on that side, you switch your stance as you go. But see how he like lances over to the side? Will slide as he catches it. It's bringing your body out of the way, but it's also loading the spring for your counter. So this is when someone catches your kick. So on your way in as a, as a knee fighter, you always have to block on your way in. That's what he was showing in that demo there. So this is trying to show Karahat's slip out, where someone grabs your leg and you roll your shoulder to push their head and slip out. You have to step outside of someone's stance, otherwise you won't get the distance that you need. <laughs> otherwise you use too much power. Oh, that was good. You like roll the shoulder, get really good leverage on it. <laughs> Karat, yeah, yeah, yeah. So this guy adjusted what he was doing while still hitting pads. It was really cool. He was kind of leaning and then he started stepping outside of Chai Chai as he was still punching. He made the adjustment. So see how you like step 
across with your punches. Everyone hears this in Muay Thai to like step across like you're chopping down a tree. Ch Chai does that with his punches. So if the pad is here, you basically want to step out so that when you're punching, like you walk by. you're like walking you walk by. by. Never mind. So if you're right in front of your opponent, you're going to come to either side of them. It's bringing your whole body as head movement, kind of. It's like waltzing. So he's, he's feeling the like transfer of how when one arm comes forward, it's loading for the other side. But you have to bring your weight back to the other leg and you step over. So basically your feet never stay in the same position for two strikes, you're stepping on everything. Ooh. <laughs> Look at how he loads on every single movement. He's doing the same thing Chart Chai was just doing, the way that he's stepping from side to side around the body. Everything, everything is that step out. Chart Chai is all about moving your torso. Nam Kabuin all about moving your torso. But it looks very different, even though it's completely the same concept. Oh, looks like Kung Fu. But he's always loading for the next movement. Like he's never dodging and done. He like gets out of the way and then he's ready to spring forward for the counter. So see how he pushes the teep across his own body? There's one where you can slap to the outside. He's teaching how to push it. Like that, there we go. But see how he brings his leg around as he's parrying? That one he's parrying to the outside, that's fine. It's the same thing. The important part is stepping to the outside. So watch Diesel Noy's feet. See how he's like able to bounce onto the ball of his toes? He doesn't have flat feet. Those look flat, but he's got a bend in his knees. And he's, the weight is on the ball of his feet so that he has flex all the time. And then as the knee is coming up, he's just using his lower body to step to the side, but his upper body has tension on the neck so that he can wrench that guy across as he's moving. They're like, let us be the demos so that you don't <laughs> tire yourself. <laughs> Diesel Noy cannot calm down. Look at him slap him because he's not moving his hip. <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> he's, he's not happy because they're not doing it with the destructive energy that he would be doing it. <laughs> he's only happy when you're trying to like shred someone like a pit bull with a box or something. <laughs> Yeah, so you don't just pull and you're done. You pull and attack. See how he's ready to go. He yanks and he's ready to knee. Oh, look at him go. <laughs> His expression is so perfectly him. If you have balance, I told you already, you can punch combination a lot. So he's saying if you have balance, you can punch combinations a lot. What he means is, in order to flow, you have to be on balance. Being unbalanced is what interrupts your flow. So what he teaches with his weight transfers and like pivoting around and using his shoulders, you can keep moving all the time. It doesn't matter what the combination is, it's not interrupted by being off balance. It creates this endless movement. Oh God, I could watch Cha Cha Shadowbox all day.
It's like you can do anything, any punches you like, anything you've already learned if you have balance. What I've learned from working with Chai Chai is that if you have balance, you actually have really good defense also. If you're off balance, you don't want to throw anything because you don't feel defended. If you're balanced, you feel defended and you can throw anything. Everything's balanced. Everything's balanced. So Namkabuan here showing how after you catch, you knee and then you shove. It's never just one thing. It's never like, here, I need you, and I'm done. Oh, look at him go. <laughs> he also is trying to get the energy out of people. It's like a lighter version of Diesel Noy. <laughs> yes. Yes. Look at, <laughs> look at him do the jump to indicate what he means by, like, you throw someone out of the ring. That's not an expression. Like, Nam Kabun actually threw people out of the ring. So see how he's catching that teep right in front of his belly? He's locking it with his wrists, and then he's just pushing it out of the way because he does not fucking need it, and he's going to attack. But see how strong he catches it, and then he has his forearm down to, like, intercept it. So you catch it right on your belly, the way that like in baseball or with football you like catch it against your body. But he's got his forearm down to take the impact away. So it's not, uh, in Thai they call it juk. Juk is to like knock the wind out of you. So he teeps, moves it out of the way, and then knees into the belly. This is exactly what Nam Kabuan was just showing by catching a kick, except he's catching the teep. But it depends on which side they teep, which side will be their open side, and that's which one you need. Oh, look at him ready to go. Not a good one. <laughs> He's like, I want to throw all of these. It's never one counter with him. It's all the counters. <laughs> oh, look at him go. You just keep going. <laughs> You have to go watch Nam Kabun's fights. You'll see exactly what he's doing right now in like full form. He's making small gestures towards it. So Matt's helping explain. So he's showing how you can scoop on either side. But the way that you move your feet is the important part. And you want firmness in your parry. You don't want to, like, mush the parry. See how he swatted it out of the way? But his footwork is what actually gets him out of the way and prepares him for the counter. If you don't step hard, like if you don't have a wide stance, you're off balance trying to do your counter. You can't keep your butt back in clinching. It doesn't work. That's very bad. You can't get in. You want to bring your chest up and bring your hips in, and then you can, like, swim your way in. If you watch Karahat, his chest is always, always up. He's always strutting around. <laughs> so they can feel that it's just sliding the shoulder in. It's just this little, like, wiggle. But you have to have your body upright. It's very hard for Westerners for us to put our hips in towards people. It feels very vulnerable and rude. But you need it for angles, and it's also safer to have your hips in. But it gives you, it gives you better control. Steve's <laughs> Lenoir. <laughs> 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 Come on, guys, do it for real. Once more with feeling. <laughs> Diesel Noy exemplifies how technique is not just technique. Technique is feeling and how you use it. Oh, that's pretty. See how Matt uses the explosiveness when he demos it? 
it's totally like when you watch um, hip hop dancers. They call it hitting. You like hit the move. You have to hit stuff in Muay Thai. Like you have to hit the move. You can't just kind of mush it. <laughs> so he's faking the teep. By faking the teep, you get someone to like kind of brace against it, and they post. They're ready to catch something at their belly, or they're trying to parry it, and then you hit them in the face instead. <laughs> this is Emma. She came to help uh, translate and walk people through some of the techniques. She was on both days. See how he kind of swung for it first? But look at how, look at how smooth that movement is. He's just using his footwork, and then by pinching his shoulder is what causes the um, forearm to get twisted off. Oh, nice. See how he turns each time between the uppercut and the hook? That's totally what Chai Chai is always talking about, you always load the spring each time. Like the uppercut and the hook can't be one movement, you have to come back to neutral in between. Or twist in between, which is more than neutral. So this is, this is faking the punch to get someone to cover, and then you nail them in the belly underneath. So it's the opposite of what he was doing, getting someone to cover their belly so that you can punch them in the face from the teeth. This is if you actually throw the punch and someone parries it. So he's showing how you don't actually throw the punch and then the knee because it leaves you vulnerable. Instead, you fake the punch just to get them to cover. <laughs> oh. Look at how he slides in on the knee. He's got this slide knee. Oh, So he fakes the punch and then just takes this massive step and slides in. It's beautiful. So that was the Four Legends seminar, the first. And uh, thank you to everyone who came. It was an awesome, awesome two days.